Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, we are on day 26, and today I want to talk to you about the agreements that we make in our daily experiences, how we make those agreements in order to experience things, in order to experience emotions and future events that are going to be happening to us. So the whole dynamic of uh, creation is really based on the mechanics that begin within this physical body as a projector of the hologram, which we call reality, as the creator of all the experiences that we're having, our ability to understand our what we are inputting into the system of creation is incredibly important. And the less and less we understand that, the more hypnotized and disconnected we are and the more surprised we become when shocking things happen or when events occur that we are not prepared for. The awoken person, the person that is consciously um, present in their body, constantly aware, constantly observing the emotions and their actions and their intentions, um, is able to understand the contribution that they have to every single moment in that co-creation. And so the invitation is that as we navigate our everyday life, we begin to become aware of how much we are inputting, what we are inputting, why we are inputting those things. The majority of us, because we're in such mechanical survival mode, uh, we are usually analyzing the things that we're experiencing in a way that is not productive analysis. It's oftentimes counterproductive analysis. This analysis is not something that is uh, productive in that we are not moving into a co-creation state, but mo oftentimes destruction. Oftentimes we are in a state of judgment. Oftentimes we're in a state of fear, survival, angers. Uh, you know, frustration with the things that are happening, denial, resistance to the things that are happening. And even though we might not be physically aware that that's where we're at, the emotions, remember, the subconscious emotions are the ones that actually manage and navigate those kinds of co-creative experiences. So what that means is that we have an opportunity to kind of become more authentic through a very profound awareness of our emotions throughout our day. If we're constantly reacting to things mechanically and responding, uh, chances are we're not really aware of what we're doing and why we're doing it. We are just reacting based on known experience, based on triggers, based on our understanding of our survival and feeling that we are helpless or in a state of danger in which we have to respond to preserve and protect the self, whether it's the ego or any other parts of ourselves that we feel are threatened in that moment. So how do we move out from a state of being threatened into a state of you are in completely in control and in charge of your experience? The illusion of control is one of the hardest things to kind of break as you're navigating this physical experience. In fact, there are so many millions of things that came into place in order to create who you are here in this physical body, to create the life that you live, the relationships, the circle of friends that you have, all of the experiences that you're experiencing. And really, there we are very much an interdependent organism. But oftentimes, we are making choices and decisions based on our past experiences that bring us into loops of repetition. And because we're an interdependent, interconnected network of information and consciousness, oftentimes we, our disk kind of gets scratched in that we're completely replaying over and over patterns and behaviors. So how do we pull away from the state of survival and the repetitive patterns that are a result of the survival mode? The idea is that as an organism that is embodied into this human body, the soul that came into this human body has an actual choice with all of its information that is encoded, all of the experiences that it has through its mother, through its father, all, everything that it's learned throughout its entire life, all of the exact moments in its life that have caused challenges in order for this organism, yourself, to grow, all of those opportunities were designed in a sense 
by a much higher intelligence of the collective consciousness of the organism of the higher souls that decides to come in and experience those things in order to experience and learn to transcend the limitations of those belief systems, of those temporary holographic experiences. And this organism that is here embodied in this physical body experiencing this one moment is designed to perfection in order to overcome these experiences if it chooses to do so. Remember that with free will, you have the choice to either experience that suffering and we are constantly cycling, right, an infinity loop of these experiences of highs and lows, love and expansive feelings, and of course, sometimes feelings of separation and suffering. But all of them play an important role in the evolution. Just because the entire universe is moving in this cyclical pattern, everything is moving through these highs and lows, through higher vibration, lower vibration, areas that energy moves faster, areas that energy moves slower. And as an interconnected system, we are feeling all of those things. It's part of the experience process. So the more that we become aware of that as the mechanics of this organism experiencing this holographic earth life, the idea is that we become aware and understand that you have the option to harness your life force in such a way that you are shifting that focus of your life force from a depletion and counter creation into a state of complete creation. And this co-creation that is a result of this creation is something that helps the entire organism balance itself out the entire organism is also experiencing on a macro level that same kind of experience of these rise and falls, all of these experiences. The more that an organism finds stability within its grounding, within its complete awareness of itself, within its acknowledgement of itself, the less these highs and lows are going to affect it to a point in which it reaches that zero point in which all the movement is now occurring around it and it has found the stillness, the eye of the storm. And so the idea is that we can become that eye of the storm by learning how to harness that life force, directing that life force, directing the attention and the creative ability into a co-creative state, rather depletion and counter-creation. And in our agreements that we make in life, all of these exchanges that we're doing with these organisms that are around us are united by resonance. Things that we have karmically experienced in our life that caused us suffering resulted in a certain pattern of being, personality, choices in our careers, choices in our relationships. And more than likely, they are repeating patterns that our parents have lived but have not uh, trend, uh, been able to overcome and we are relearning those same experiences. So the idea is that we learn how to overcome the limitations of those experiences and expand into new experiences, evolving the collective organism that is yourself and all that is a part of you. So as we begin to move through this evolution, as we begin to heal, as we begin to integrate ourselves, harness our life force in this net plane of creation, in this incredible uh, constant movement of life force and exchanges, the idea is that we are able to heal this body and to move more quickly out of heavy emotions, trauma, fear, pain, limiting beliefs, anything that slows down the creation of this organism in a way that becomes really counter, really creative instead of counter-creative. So we can begin to shift those programs by identifying those patterns that we keep living, those repeated karmic patterns. We identify them, acknowledge them, understand the charge behind them, which is emotional, what feeds into these patterns is the emotional patterns that we are reliving and cycling through constantly. So if we stop that pattern, the reaction to these triggers that occur, 
we're going to begin to change the way it's written in our code, change the patterns that we are not only attracting into our life, but continue to live over and over again. So every time that we experience friction or a, a, a violent event or an event that wakes us up, shakes us up out of discomfort zone and monotony of, of repetition, monotony of hypnosis, um, the hypnosis of reaction, that's when we start to become aware sometimes of very painful things that we may not have known are deeply, deeply ingrained within us. And this is where the work takes place. It's in this place where we begin to feel all of these heavy emotions that were gently triggered through an event, but it takes us going deep into those experiences to open up whatever information is there so that we can clear up stagnation, right? That's what we call stagnation. And as we begin to clear this up, we begin to not only change the amount of energy and life force that moves through this body, but we begin to harness life force in the body more profoundly. We can move it quicker through the body. This provides healing for the body. So in today's exercise, we're going to work on identifying some of these contractual agreements that we have made to experience based on the emotions that we're feeling throughout the day, based on the emotions that we keep repeating, the patterns, those repetitive patterns that we keep repeating. And we're going to clear out those karmic agreements, karmic. The, root, the word karmic means cause and effect. So everything that we are as a whole, as a result of all of the prior cause and effects of yourself and your ancestors, your parents, all of your lineage that plays a part in the culmination of your creation is basically surfacing and surfacing again and again until it becomes addressed. And it is encoded in your genetic code, your holographic DNA stores that information because it's first encoded as a child to the age of seven from the birth until the age of seven we are picking up these messages as to how we should behave how we should feel how we view the world how we view ourselves and all of those belief systems are things that we are filing in a filing cabinet in the back of the mind and as soon as a trigger comes that triggers a certain belief system in some way, this is where we pull from in order to respond to the event that's occurring. So this is great if the information that's coming up is something that is productive for you. But it's not so great if the information that's coming up is something that is preserving a part of you that actually needs to grow, a part of you that actually needs to change, a part of you that actually needs to heal. And usually that vacancy of that awareness in that space is the one that becomes a very powerful resonance because it's very low and it becomes a resonance to these matching experiences that continue to trigger and trigger and trigger it until you address that vacant space. And when I say vacant, there really is nothing vacant. It is whether we are reacting to that consciously, that experience consciously, or whether we are just reacting to it and mechanically responding to it in a way that is not as creative. And how do we define that creation is your ability to love the self. When you are aware of yourself, accepting yourself, loving the self, then you are harnessing life force in the body. You are completely aware of this whole self as an entire organism. And your choices match the awareness of that whole organism in order for this choice to be something that's for the highest good. But more mechanical responses won't be for the highest good of the organism. They are only going to be good enough to help support the temporary discomfort that the trigger and the pain and the suffering from previous learned experiences have caused within the body. And if we continue to listen to that pain and suffering that is still residing in the body, we are counter-creating. This is the result of the counter-creation. So stopping for a moment in your next moment that you're about to react in order to change that pattern is a really, really powerful thing to do so that we are not reliving those counter-creative patterns, patterns that are self-destructive to the whole organism. 
our awareness of ourselves, our awareness of why we feel certain things throughout the day, the awareness of the things that trigger us and why they trigger us throughout the day are really important in our personal development, in our healing, our integration. And more importantly, when you look at yourself as an organism, the harnessing of life force that you have, the potential that you have as an organism for creation. And it's when we embody this harnessing of energy of life force that we can begin to experience the so-called magic of life or this incredible co-creation experience that we can begin to manifest money abundance relationships that are in alignment with our highest self events experiences opportunities that begin to move more in alignment with what you're here to do and what brings you the greatest bliss. This is the highest bliss for the organism. And so um, in this exercise, as we begin to change those contractual agreements, those agreements, karmic cyclical patterns, we are consciously choosing that since we understand this law of creation, that throughout our entire day, we are changing from those repetitive pattern files into new files that we're creating of co-creation. And how do we create the new co-creation files? Well, the human organism, because of its magnificent ability to manifest and create, the laws of this exchange are about vibrational frequency. So if your vibrational frequency is again lower as a result of the survival mode, You're never going to match creation energy. It's always going to be protection, uh, self-destruction, lack, inability to expand, inability to create. It's the opposite of creation. But if you embody the vibrational frequency of something that is whole, that is creative, that is aware of itself, full of acceptance of itself, this is where you begin to match infinite possibilities. And... The, the most incredible thing about this is that when you begin to change that vibrational frequency, you'll notice that your entire day changes as well. The events that happen, the things that you attract, and even when you attracted difficult relationships in your life, that relationship begins to change. The relationship with the people, relationship with an, event, an environment, relationship with your work, with yourself, change because you're looking through a different vibrational frequency. You are looking through a different potential experience. And so as how do we define that when we don't know what that looks like yet? We don't know how it is. Well, vibrational frequency is something that we always are. This high vibrational frequency is always available to us in the body. It is just a matter of us snapping out of the hypnosis that we don't have that connection into embodying that awareness and applying it into our every moment. And that awareness is the presence, full presence of yourself where you at in this moment, the room that you're in, the smells that you smell, the things that you hear, full awareness, full incorporation of this body. Because a lot of the times, because we're in hypnosis, we are usually up here. We are never in the body because the body is so overwhelmed with denial of of emotions and experiences that we're trying to avoid that we end up completely disconnected from the truth physical vessel that is required for your ascension, for your work, for your healing. There is no separation. So if you separate yourself from that negative parts of us that don't feel good, we're never going to get anywhere. So the complete awareness in the physical body is the number one step in this work. And it means that you have to be in your body throughout the day, feel in your body throughout the day become aware, be absolutely present in the body throughout your day. And sometimes that can be very difficult. When we are in survival mode, it's going to be the hardest thing to do to be in your physical body. So there are some tools that I'll share with you in order to help yourself that work with the chakra centers. We forget that we are not just this physical body, but vortices of energy that are coming together to create this physical body into this hologram that's biophysical, right? The organs, the skin, the cells, the veins, the hair, all of the features of the body that come together as a result of this hologram that is encoded by the information that we are. 
and it is encoded from that holographic DNA that is a product of everything that you are since the origin of time. But you have an infinite source of life force that is what feeds and brings this organism to life. So you have that higher vibrational essence as a part of you at all times. It's your decision to either connect into that or not, or just look from this top down to the physical things that are happening, the distractions, the heavy emotions, the dramas, the suffering, the pain. We get very, very intoxicated with that. We become addicted to those emotions. And it becomes very difficult in that when we're in that realm to go up to the higher levels. So we have to help ourselves. And as we move through the universe in the next couple years, it's going to feel that if you're totally in that deep, dark place, you can really have the opportunity to go very low. And the moment that you make the choice and pull your body into a state of neutrality, you're going to start feeling a little better immediately. But how do you bring your body into this neutrality? The vortices that are in your body, the first three chakras are the ones that are mostly connected with this physical realm. So as you begin to work with them, as you learn how to train yourself to close them, bring back your engagement, your energetic engagement, because these chakras, whichever ones are most open, that's where your energetic engagement and investment is in the co-creation of your holographic experience. So if your sacral chakra, for example, is wide open, out of control, totally imbalanced, you're going to be experiencing a lot of relationship, exchanges, dramas, uh, insecurities, probably lack of money, lack of connection, sexual energy is depleted or over-enhanced. Um, and of course, the way that you see yourself and your relationship with others, your ability to create, your ability to manifest, all of those things are going to be out of balance. And it's the same with the root. If the root is, is completely wide open and out of balance, the way that we feel safe in the world, our place, we're going to feel disconnected. We're going to feel like we don't belong. We're going to feel like we're incapable, unworthy, unloved. And a lot of these programs are highlighted at times like these that we're going through in which the entire globe has to address those parts in order to change and shift the collective. So as we begin to work with this information, we begin to gently bring in the body this essence of awareness. And from that essence of awareness, we have an opportunity of immediately shifting the vibrational frequency by closing and calling back the life force that we are depleting through that, our investment. Our investment in those imbalanced emotions now comes back. The investment in feeling unsafe at all times, everywhere in the body, outside, comes back. The investment in having an imbalanced emotions or over emotions uh, comes back. All, all of those things, and I'm completely simplifying because chakras are more complicated than that. There's much more information that is available for you there that is specific to your timelines, to your life experiences, to your ancestral patterns. All of that is designing your day. So take a look at where you're struggling. Take a look at the things that are causing you suffering, anger, pain, whatever emotions that you're having a hard time dealing with and trace them back to the body. The body doesn't lie. It tells you everything that you need. Everything is encoded in the muscle memories of the body. Uh, it is encoded down to the cellular molecular level of the body. So if you ever feel lost or disconnected, that's why the most important thing to do is to come back to the self and to connect with the body because the body is actually the instrument that helps us navigate these difficult, confusing, over-information and, uh, you know, disconnect from the source. This is it. This is the physical body. Without this, we don't have anything. So we need to understand, you know, um, it's not that we don't have anything. Without this, we are not experiencing and being able to manage our experience and co-create or counter-create if we wish in this physical plane. So it's important to understand those mechanics. And this is really where free will plays a role because without this understanding of how to utilize this incredibly important vessel that the body is, we will not be able to 
progress and move in something that is more creative for the whole organism. And also our everyday choices will be mechanical automatons, right? We're just responding mechanically. Um, and this is where people get pulled into more suffering, unfortunately. So um, once we rein back where the investment of life force is, you're going to notice that you have much more expansive, there's more room. As soon as, you know, your emotions will change, if you are depressed, they're going to change either into a state of neutrality or room for more joy, more love, more observation, more stillness. Okay, so all of these upper chakras are really the ones that help us embody and harness in, embody more life force. If we're down there, we're not connecting. If we are balanced, if we're aware, the instrument is connecting. The instrument is open. It's like online. It's like internet. You connect to the net. Uh, without the connection, we're just disconnected. And that's where we end up feeling lost. So we're going to break the karmic contracts with our highest vibrational frequency. And when we harness back the life force, you begin to activate the higher levels in a way where your intuition now comes online. And that connection allows for the intuition. And this is something that we have to practice and train ourselves throughout the day. So instead of depleting and responding mechanically, how about pausing and tuning into the intuition and seeing what it has to say when we are in survival mode we cannot connect to a clear intuition we simply cannot the mechanics of the body will not allow it so we need to understand to help the body train ourselves um, discipline the selves into working with these energy centers without doing the work without doing the emotional deep deep self-healing and work without understanding how the energy works in the body we are just candles floating from one thing to another as the wind blows being affected by the things that are outside of us and we need to change the level of co-creation we can either co-create from a place of victimism or we can co-create from a place of a god uh, self that is more aware that understands, that takes responsibility for itself and its investment in this experience. And it's very important that you do that so that you can begin to understand why your life is the way it is and how you can change that if you, if you want to change that or enhance that or heal. Whatever it is that you're trying to do in your life, it brings light into that path, into your journey, into yourself, so that you can do those things that bring you the greatest joy and ultimately help collect, co heal the collective. So with this crown chakra, which is the center of creation, this is where the light moves into the body, the source energy moves into the body. If this is stuck or sleeping, of course, it won't allow that life force. If this is wide open, it won't allow that life force. If this is broken, disconnected, and not connected to the self, it won't allow. So this instrument is very sensitive and very important to understand. We have to open the, vo the vortices of the body to allow movement and allow that life force to move into the lower chakras, to the lower parts of the body, meaning source into the physical three-dimensional experience. And we do that through the body. That's why it's so important. So once we activate that crown, we will create a visual where we tune into every single aspect of the self, all of those experiential agreements that we are encoded in our holographic system, and begin to replace those contractual agreements with a higher vibrational expression. Now that the organism has connected and has come online, so this is a really, really, really powerful practice that I'm sharing with you, and it's one that I invite you to do daily, because you begin to help the soul shift and wake up from the mechanical system into creation. You're moving, and the more that you work through these agreements, the more productive your life will become and more in alignment with what you want, your highest expression, whatever that may look like. There is no definition for that.
So let's get started. We're going to start by inhaling deeply. We're going to start by grounding down to the center of the earth, bringing yourself into your body, really sitting in that stillness for a moment, completely aware of your body. Bringing yourself fully into the body, feeling your body, feeling your toes, feeling your skin on the entire body, the sensations around the body inside the body. And focusing on our breathing as we inhale and exhale. Observing the body. Connecting to the entire body at once from the head to the feet the ankles, the shins, the calves, the knees, the thighs, breathing deeply. Going up into the lower back, abdomen, breathing deeply, bringing yourself fully into your body, Becoming aware of the areas of the body that feel discomfort in this moment and the parts that feel fine. Breathing deeply. Going up into the chest, breathing deeply, bringing that oxygen into the body. Going up into the neck. The shoulders, the arms, the hands. Going up into the head, the face. Bringing yourself fully into the body with every breath you take. Feeling yourself here in this, wherever you're seated. Feel the seat underneath you or the cushion that you're on or the bed, whatever you're on, I want you to feel it underneath your body, almost as if you can feel your weight sinking into that space. Feeling the air that revolves around your body, bringing yourself fully into the body, 360 degrees of awareness. As you begin to tap into your energetic field around you, fully aware of your energy, how it extends around you, areas that are not aware, and you'll notice that because it'll look like it's not, you can't see the energetic field in that space or feel it or sense it, or it just feels like it's simply not there. You just know. I want you to trust however it is that you tune in to non-physical information. And you're going to be using one of your five senses or all of the five senses to do that. So just tuning in to your energetic field. Observing. Okay? And any areas that feel like they're empty or broken or not there or not aware, just go ahead and fill them in. With your awareness, fill them in. As if you are filling your energetic field around you, just by being aware of it is how you wake up the holographic system that is projecting all around you, that is your experience. And this simple practice of awareness just helps you more deeply come into the body. Really strengthen that awareness. And as you now are aware of your physical body, you're just going to create a field around you. 
And this field is just to remind us that everything inside of this organism that you are is what you can control. This is what you can control. Everything that's here. This is you. You can grab your arms and I want you to hug yourself. Just a quick reminder, physical reminder, that this body is here. This is what you can control. This is where your power lies. It's within this vessel, this beautiful, intelligent instrument of creation that is your body. Breathing deeply and just acknowledging that immediately shifts your vibrational frequency. So it's important to do this throughout your day. If you're having a hard time managing your emotions, if you're having a hard time, uh, you know, ch making changes in your life, it's important to, even if you have to put an alarm, to sit there and just touch your body, connect with yourself. Okay wake up the body so that it remembers itself. It's here. I am here in this body. My consciousness, my awareness, my presence is fully here. And I'm here to create now. With full sovereignty, with full free will, I'm here to create. So with every breath you take, as you become aware of your physical body, as you embody this presence, we're going to begin to work on the chakra system. So in the root chakra, go ahead and close it down to the size of a dime. The sacral chakra, go ahead and close it down to the size of a dime. The solar chakra, down to the size of a dime. The heart chakra, open that chakra as wide as possible. Throat chakra, open that chakra as wide as possible. Third eye, open that chakra as wide as possible. Making sure the back is also open. Okay? making sure the back is also closed. For most of you, the back will always be, al already be closed because actually the back of the chakras we're not aware of and they're usually very stagnant with emotions that we suppress or ignore or resist. So this is also something that we will work on at the end of this meditation. We're going to bring in some neutral healing energy. So from the earth, go ahead and visualize a golden energy that comes into the body, powerful golden energy, beginning to rotate all around your system as quick as possible. This vortex is moving with gold light. And I want you to sit there and with your mind, just imagine that it is clearing any heaviness in your energetic field, in this organism, in this body. Feeling that spin moving through your body really powerfully as you stay as still as possible. As still as possible. Don't try not to fidget. Try not to move. Try to stay very still and feel that life force moving around you, through you. Breathing deeply. From the universe, from source, go ahead and bring down a powerful wave of golden light that comes in and mixes again with this earth light. So go ahead and visualize those gold energies mixing all around you, moving the energy, moving that life force. Breathing deeply, harnessing this life force as you stay very still. It's almost as if you're creating this centrifugal movement throughout your body and you can really feel it from this center point this is where you become the eye of the storm you just observe and it's almost as if this tornado of energy is moving around you so take a moment and feel that sensation through your body okay you're going to take a small percentage of that anchor that back down to the earth 
gold and gold, anchor it down to the center of the earth. Let's go ahead and begin to let go of anything that we, any debris that we have picked up or just anything that is exhausting, draining, any thoughts, emotions, whatever we're dealing with in our life that is causing blockages, stagnation. Go ahead and just imagine moving that out of the system. Okay, we're going to take 80% of that up the spine and from the crown of the head, creating a fountain. Go ahead and create a fountain of energy as it coats the outside. So you're still inside the, the tornado, okay, or a hurricane, whatever you want to envision. Just imagine this vortex of moving energy around you. And you're going to try to stay as still as possible in the center. And what you've done is you created kind of like a cocoon where this en energy is moving. And because it's spinning, it's like create creating this incredibly beautiful torsional field around your body. So the torsional field around the body begins to clear any kind of heaviness that's in the outer realms of this physical body, the outer fields, anything that has to do with the external hologram that we live in, the matrix, this holographic illusion. So in this moment, just visualize clearing out anything that needs to become neutral for us in order to see clearly, in order for us to embody love, neutrality, Balance. Breathing deeply, breathing deeply, moving that energy through you. Okay, going back to the solar plexus, taking that final 10% up your spine, and now you're going to bring it down to the arms and bring it inside of your field. So you can really feel the energy now. And as you feel that vortex, now the eye of the storm is, absor is absorbing that life force into the body. So this is a great opportunity for you to recharge, to heal. If you're feeling tired, this will help you move out of that exhaustion into a more energized, neutral state. Okay, if you're feeling too hyperactive, it'll help bring you into a nurturing, safe space. The body has an intelligence of, it, of its own. It knows exactly what it needs. So just allow the energy to do what it needs to do for you at that moment. So good. Very good. Just allow that beautiful energy to fill this organism with healing, with support, with love, with connection, with wisdom, with truth, with love. Okay. So now that we're here, completely activated, you're going to see a color in front of you that represents your highest vibrational frequency. Go ahead and see it. Now, something that's happening right now in the world with the astrology, with the celestial movements, the energies, is a very heavy energy is coming into our timeline. And this is about endings, deaths and rebirths. So, I want you to see the color that is there. It's going to be maybe a new color for this time. If you have been working with me for a long time, you probably have a color. So just check in and see if this is a color that you've used before or if it's a new one. So go ahead and see what color you see there. Okay? And if it's the same color you've worked before, perfect. You're going to go ahead and grab that color and we're going to activate the crown chakra. So go up to the crown you're going to spin it super, super fast, waking up the center of manifestation. If you want to manifest, if you want to believe in the law of attraction, this is, this is the center for that. So go ahead and wake that up. And you're going to fill it in, that spinning vortex, with this color. Fill it in. And in this moment, we set the intention that every area of our life begins to wake up as well. It's now connecting. It's coming online. Everything that we do from this moment on, and this is a choice, this is a decision that you can make, is in alignment with your highest expression. If you don't want that, you don't need to do it. 
But the intention is that if you would like for all of the areas of your life to come into alignment with your highest expression, this is where we start to submit that query into the internet, the interconnected network of organisms, of life force, of co-creation that we are. So go ahead and visualize filling that in. Okay, you might feel a surge of energy through the body, areas that become more awake. This is a great place to be in if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for creativity, if you're looking for ideas, if you're stuck in something in your life. This is where you want to be, right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the intention that everything, all the agreements that we've made in our life, in order to experience the things that we're experiencing at this time, individually and collectively, they appear before you. So go ahead and see in front of you all of those agreements. You're going to see a giant, giant room. And just notice, how does your room look with all these agreements? What are these agreements? Just observe. What do your agreements look like? Do they look like? contracts? Do they look like scrolls of paper? Do they look like piles of paper, piles of books? Does it look like a library? Does it look like a barn? Does it look like an, an airplane hangar? Just notice with as much detail as you begin to observe what you see. And you're going to use your imagination. Everything that you're being shown at this moment very important so just observe what does your room full of karma contracts experiential agreements look like okay and some of you that have worked with me before maybe your room has changed maybe it's become smaller maybe it's become bigger just notice that either one is exactly where you need to be And because your first three chakras are closed, you're going to maintain your observation of what you're seeing as neutral as possible. No judgments, no fears, no, oh, there shouldn't be that many, or, oh, I've done the work already. None of this feelings or feelings of guilt or shame as you begin to see these contracts or no feelings of doubt in what you're experiencing at this moment. I want you to 100% trust what you're seeing. And the more that you allow yourself to just flow into the experience of what you're seeing, the easier and the more authentic this experience will be for you. So as you see all of those contractual agreements, whatever they are, you can go ahead and go to one of those contracts. And I just want you to just observe it. Sit with this contract for a moment, completely present. And I want you to feel for the information that's in that contract. Completely surrender and allow whatever information it needs to tell you to come up. Okay? What is this contract about? Notice that. Is this a contract about yourself? A contract about relationships? Family? Work? Mission? Purpose? What is this contract about? Okay, it's going to tell you some information. So just remember that we're using all five senses. And you might use one or all of those five senses. The sixth sense is your intuition, of course. So this is the most important vessel of information that you will use for all of these senses. And I want you to trust whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you know, whatever you sense. Okay. So this is how you read these contracts. And as you read them, you become aware of parts of yourself, agreements, areas that become triggered by experiences outside. So this is where the work is available for you. As you become aware of what it says on that contract, 
You can take time every day to read one of these contracts, to connect with them, and to do the healing work necessary around them if you see that it's needed. So for today, as we begin to observe these emotions that are coming up as you look at these contracts, we're going to neutralize all of these contracts of experience out. So you're just going to visualize that from your crown, you're going to shine your light on that contract after it's given you all the information you need. Now you know what you can work on in your meditation. You can neutralize that. So you do that with your highest vibrational expression because you are shifting from this energetic information. What you're looking at is basically a file of encoded information in your holographic DNA. You're basically looking at your Akashic records, your information. So as you see that record, you're going to just eliminate that. And we set the intention that we eliminate all of the, these experiential records that we are no longer in alignment with, that we are wanting to shift. Go ahead and shine your light on all of these contracts that are not in alignment with you and just watch them dissolve. You can see them turn to sand, you can see them turn to air, you can see them burning up, breaking apart, whatever feels real to you, do what you need with those contracts in order to dissolve them, to neutralize them. And this is not just an imaginary practice, you are literally working at the cellular level with your body in order to change the programs of reaction and counter creation in your life. This is both very much a biological, physical, psychological, and psychic part of your organism that you're working with at this time. Just eliminate that. Okay. Now, if you find that it's difficult to break this contract, it means that there's still information that needs to be heard from here. There's work that needs to be done still. There's still things that are still coming to surface and parts that are not ready yet to let go of that contract. So if you feel that it's really hard to eliminate that, go ahead and work on everything else that you feel is ready to go. And everything that's left behind are things that we really, the higher self really needs us to work on at this time. And since the number of contracts are going to be reduced down to a few, this gives us a wonderful opportunity to begin to work with those things consciously throughout your day. You will be amazed at the kind of information that you find within those contracts. You will be amazed with the accuracy of relevancy it has in your life right now. So go ahead and eliminate all of the ones that you feel are ready to go. Past experiences, repetitive patterns that you're done with, that you're aware and you're actively working to neutralize and change. Okay, and just go ahead and see what you're left with. And these are contracts that are here to stay. These are contracts that we're still working on. Notice that people that are in your life long term or relationships or maybe careers or things that we're currently long term still working with are going to be the ones that are there. So take your time to look at them. And what we're going to do is we're going to help progress that healing with these agreements. And we're going to do that by shining our crown light on top of them and filling this room with the, the, the color, the same vibrational frequency that is your highest expression. We're going to surround those contracts with that light. We're going to surround this room with that light, changing the way that we are experiencing because this is, a, this is an Akashic record holder. It's an Akashic record bank. And we are constantly in this generation of information for co-creation through this space. So if we shift the vibrational frequency into this new, more expansive state, we can change what we're experiencing throughout the day. So go ahead and fill that space with that color. Breathing deeply. And I really want you to feel in your body your first three chakras are closed. Your top three are open. We set the intention from a place of complete neutrality. No emotions are in this space. Neutrality. That we set the intention that from this moment on we are co-creating from the highest 
space. Highest intention. And I just want you to notice how much lighter it feels. It feels like this heaviness was lifted off the body. And this is something that was very powerful me, for me when I first started to work with these Akashic contracts. Because um, it's incredible how much we really get stuck in those energetic spaces and really don't feel like we can move. So it's just so expansive and liberating to begin to release what we not, what no longer serves us consciously. This is the beauty of the human organism. So as you begin to feel lighter and lighter, you're going to feel that there's more space for joy. You will even feel joy in your body, freedom, expansiveness. So I really invite you to sit a moment with this very expansive feeling and allow your body to embody this feeling of love, of gratitude for a moment. Completely grateful for this life, grateful for the body, grateful for this vessel, this incredible technology, this intelligence, this connection to source, the all that we are, this incredible expansive field of co-creation, this quantum field of co-creation that we are. As you breathe deeply, becoming aware of yourself as more than just this body, but as interconnected to all things around you. Very good. Very good. Okay. Notice how the static has gone. Notice how those really crazy emotions that we had at the beginning are not there or stress or anxiety. None of that can live in this space of awareness and presence. So you're going to go to your root chakra. You're going to open it back up and you're going to spin it really fast and just allow it to just become brighter and brighter into the root chakra that you need in your body. Let go of all of that heaviness, all the fears, anxieties, angers, doubts, whatever it is that lives in that space. You're going to go up to your sacral, spin it as fast as possible. You're going to go up to your solar, you're opening them up. First, second, third chakra are now opened up and completely clean as you're spinning them. And what I mean by clean is that you're bringing them back into a neutral state. So they may have felt heavy, they may have felt dark, they may have felt fragmented, broken. Just tune into your body. This is very, very important that you communicate with your body and train yourself to have this mind-body connection and communication. So just open that up. Clear that space. Clear that heaviness from your day. Anything that you're carrying on for months that are hard to let go of, clear it out. Bring yourself fully into the present moment, into this now moment. Going up to the heart, spinning it as fast as possible. And this is where we're going to be aware of the back chakra as well. Any stagnation in the back chakras. Okay, going up to the heart, spinning it as fast as possible. the third eye and you're just going to close your top three chakras just a little bit so that your chakras are in perfect alignment now like a column that's a little bit wider at the top okay you're going to go up to your crown and you're going to send that color up activating the eighth activating the ninth activating the tenth activating the eleventh the twelfth and the thirteenth and above you is a powerful white light, a source. Just feel that life force moving through your body in your present state. Completely aware, completely conscious. And anchoring in that conscious presence here as you open your eyes. And just coming back into the room and just remembering that source that moves through you. Becoming aware of how your chakras are moving. moving becoming aware of how you are in this moment. 
knowing that in this present moment you have full control of yourself and that you can choose to suffer or be in pain or stressed out or you can bring yourself into a state of balance, of awareness, of presence, which is actually one of the most compassionate things you can do for this body at this time. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today for this powerful exercise. If you have any questions, please post them down below. I was not able to go live today, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with these technical problems that are happening with social media. Um, but if they do, uh, that's okay. In any case, I'm going to upload this onto the channel. Um, I really invite your questions, your comments, and I was hoping to share some time with you tonight, but I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.